So I want to speak on uh, Michael Rubin's uh, statement on The Breakfast Club, where he stated that there is so much black on black hate uh, in black culture and basically talking about how people were coming on, uh, coming at uh, Meek Mill and making statements about him, his lifestyle and thinking that he, he has a certain lifestyle that he needs to just come out and say that he's a part of that lifestyle. Um, I'm just going to read quote for quote what he said um, and just go from there. Uh, but he was on The Breakfast Club, Michael Rubin, and, you know, a billionaire. And this is what he says. To Charlemagne and Envy, with no pushback, I might, might add, nobody pushed back to what he said. So this is what he said. The thing I don't like about that is doesn't does bother me for me it bothers me that it actually when i see the narrative of really good friend of mine like meek and people try you know again and say that you know he you know is um you know gay um and he goes on uh, michael rubin says uh which is not one gay bone on his body who cares Number one, and this is what Michael Rubin is saying, let's say people want to be gay. It is 2024. Who the F cares? Okay. Number two, there's not a gay bone on his body. So like, why do people want to lie about that? Why do people want to change the narrative? I bet he made with me to try to hurt him. Like that is the one thing I've learned about, you know, look, I'm just being blunt because it's me. So one thing I've learn about black culture that I don't like is that black hate on hate. Speak on that more. And this is what Charlemagne is saying. You say you don't like to see black people tearing other black people. And then he goes on to say, yeah, it's horrible. Like it's horrible. Like why? Like I don't, like I want to support every look you got. Two of you guys know me pretty well. He's talking to DJ Envy and Charlemagne. Anything I can ever help with I'm always there. I always want to be helpful. I feel lucky and fortunate to do what I do every day to be as, you know, whatever success I've had. I feel blessed to do that. Uh, and this is someone, before I keep going, this is someone that is really tight, uh, you know, with uh, Robert Kraft, who got caught up in uh, the massage thing, and it was aligned with human trafficking and all that. But we'll keep going. And I want to get back in every way I can, you know, in business and in charitable things, charitable things, I'm always trying to be helpful. Like, why does someone want to bring somebody else down? Let me stop here. This guy don't help nobody unless he's getting something out of it. So anyone out there that thinks that somebody's just giving somebody money or taking them here or you perform here, and there's always something that person wants to return. Uh, and I'm, I'm not talking about what folks are saying about me, whatever. I'm just talking about from a financial type of thing or some type of, uh, you know, things that folks are expecting monetary or do an event or something like that. Uh, he said, let's try to build everybody up. Like, you know, I'd be more excited if, you know, I'd be more excited to see one of my friends do something that 99% less meaningful to me, but it will be really meaningful to them because I want them to do great. I want everyone around me to do great. I don't like watching, you know, there's a little bit, and you tell me, you guys, correct me if you think I'm wrong. It ain't going to correct you. They ain't say nothing when you first said it. He said, I think there's a little bit of black culture of, like, it's black hate on hate, right? It's like that black judge that Meek, uh, that hated on him and want to put in uh, and go extra hard on him, okay? It's like, it's what people always say to me. It's like black hate on hate, this guy's a billionaire. This guy, quote unquote, they say he's knowledgeable. And that's the reason why people need to learn history. That's the reason why people need to really be around folks, right? That will call them out because look how they didn't say nothing to this guy. So I think it's terrible. I think it's something that it's like, I think it's culturally wrong. Now he's talking about our culture, black American culture. And I'll probably get killed for saying this because you know, here, I'm glad you're saying it openly. This is what they say. If this is the conversation that are being, I have it all the time with you. Yeah, I want to hear this. Yeah, so I think it's wrong. I think, like, why do you not want to build everyone up around you? Why do you not want everyone around you to be great? The best way 
for everyone to do great is to push each other up. So my response to this, and you know, it's important for him to recognize that the roots of division uh, within uh, the black community trace back to slavery, where enslaved people were deliberately pitted against each other by their oppressors. Strategy was designed to maintain control and prevent unity. A tactic that unfortunately has left a lingering effect on the community, like that crab in the, ba in the barrel uh, type of thing. The systemic programming to divide and conquer continues to impact uh, communities today. However, it's crucial to understand that this isn't just something that has happened. Um, you know, when he says this whole black hate, black hate, you know, there's other uh, communities that, that, you know, there's black, there's, there's hate in that community as well. But in every community, there are instances where people tear each other down instead of lifting each other up. It's a human issue, not solely a black on black issue, but we can trace it as far as in America uh, to, to be in, during slavery. Singling out black culture as being particularly, uh, you know, prone to self-sabotage overlooks the broader context and uh, inadvertently perpetuate harmful stereotypes. He made a stereotype um, in this and he was not checked by black folks. Um, and then someone that's not even black, um, I don't think it's appropriate for him to make sweeping statements about our culture. Don't care how many friends you got, you're not in a position to be a spokesperson or, 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 or make a statement on something, right? And nobody can check you and educate you that you're really talking on both sides of your mouth. Um, without a deep, thorough understanding of the complexities and historical context, um, he needs to be quiet. Instead of focusing on perceived negative aspects, it's more constructive to support and amplify the voices within the community that are working to uplift each other. So, I mean, for me, for him to make that statement, it just sounds like someone that's talking about black on black crime. Like if, if someone is in a, an area that's predominantly, um, you know, black, I mean, that's what the crime is going to be in that area. Now, if we go, if we really get really specific with this, um, they'd like to talk about how high black on black crime is. Well, how many of that is black American crime? Because it'll be lower than the number that folks are, are coming up with. Um, and the thing he has to also understand is that, um, you know, Meek Mill recently was, uh, I think he did a, I forgot where he was at, but it was a workshop and he was on there with Robert Kraft and he was talking uh, Robert Kraft is, uh, you know, Michael Rubin's friend as well. But he was talking about the fact that he got paid more. Listen to this. Meek Mill said he got paid more by record labels to talk about, like, negative things, you know, to, you know, whatever it is, a negative thing that he could put in his record about another black person, or what they, he could do to them or how he could take them out, whatever it may be. He got paid more money and he took the money. So, and he said that in the presence of Robert Kraft and I wouldn't even be surprised that Mike, Michael Rubin saw that. So he is okay with that happening, you know, in that regard. There is no backlash. There is no statement on any podcast or interview show of him saying, man, Meek, man, that's wrong, man. You talking down on folks, man. You talking about taking someone out. You talking about using all these types of things, whatever, in a negative way. And you just taking it. You just doing it just to get more money. He had no statement on that. But when somebody says something about Meek Mill on social media, someone that ain't making no money off of saying whatever they want to say about Meek Mill, but Meek Mill is actually profiting off of the demise right profiting off of making negative records and then people have called them out saying man you were prison reform you were you were talking about the legal systems jacked up you were out there being an activist and then the next album you put out there you talked about all the negative things you're going to do to people that look like you so again michael rubin sit this one out Sit this one out. Focus on your own, um, like I said, things that you have going on, but you don't need to be speaking on 
of the black American culture. And the fact that just Charlemagne stayed quiet when Biden came on there and said, you ain't black, um, you know, if you uh, vote, uh, if you don't vote Democrat. He also, Charlemagne said, you know, really have that much pushback when Kamala Harris said, you acting like a Republican. I mean, just think about all these messages that put out there. So again, Michael Rubin is not interacting with Jay-Z, Meek Mill, or any of these individuals without wanting something in return. I don't, I, people can keep saying that, oh, these people are just doing something of the kindness of their heart. Um, I'm not saying this, they're asking for money, but you're gonna do something. You're gonna make an appearance somewhere, you're gonna go to an event, you are going to repay them for, for what you're doing, right? For what they're doing for you. He was okay aligning himself with Robert Kraft and all the unethical things that Robert Kraft was involved in. He was okay with that. He ain't made no statement on that Robert Kraft incident, but he's speaking on his friend from a different community and saying, I really don't like when you guys do that. So basically he's saying in, in his family or friends or community dynamics that there aren't any issues and concerns, that there's hate there, um, that there's envy there, that there's all types of things in there. It's exclusive to our community. And then when he makes that statement that it's exclusive to our community, he leaves out the historical elements that how many times, you, brother or sister, you know, you worked at a job and you were trying to come together with someone that was that was your color, right? And, and you were trying to, you were know, on break and you're talking with them or you're working and you're talking, whatever, and, and they always came to you and split that up. But if somebody else from a different background was talking, laughing, and doing the same thing at the job, they said nothing. Our unity is always blocked. Every time we try to unify or say we're going to come together or we're going to boycott and, and do X, Y, Z, folks from other communities always try to get involved in it to try to see what we're up to, see where we're in the mix. But they're able to have all of their um, you know, things going on amongst themselves to build themselves. So again, do we as a community need to come together more? Yes. Do we uh, need to have a tribal mindset? You know, you can't all as one come together, but friends that you know, family that you know, strangers that you know, create your own tribe, like interests, positivity, and all that. That's something that we can definitely do. But Michael Rubin, stay out of this. You are not in any position to be talking about what we got going on. You know, and if we really think about it, Michael Rubin, uh, you know, Michael Rubin was sued. Um, he was sued for um, 76ers owner property company was sued by a woman after her head was caved in by a chair that fell off his penthouse. Uh, what else? What else that we got going on with Michael Rubin? Let's see. Let's see. He, let's see. Broke every rule. I just want to get that article. Michael Rubin, another one, admits he was violating every rule the NBA had as a part of Sixers ownership. Admitted to it. Admitted to be unethical, right? All these types of things that this guy is involved in and and the parties that he's throwing and people saying, you know, he's throwing similar parties like Diddy and making suggestions of what he possibly is involved in. I think he should keep quiet. And just Jay-Z, Jay-Z is, this, this is Jay-Z's friend as well. Jay-Z uh, is cool with Michael Rubin. Um, they're all in the mix. And that's why people gave Jay-Z backlash of how he didn't perform at the Hip Hop 50 anniversary, but he made sure he performed for, uh, you know, Robert Kraft and Tom Brady. So, I mean, there's so much stuff on this guy. DraftKings accuses ex-exec of double agent, being a double agent in phonetics uh, move.
DraftKings has sued a former senior vice president whom the company accused of being a double agent for coordinating with fanatics to steal proprietary uh, company information and join the competitor all in violation of non-compete. In its 49-page complaint filed late Monday in U.S. District Court for Massachusetts DraftKings tells the different versions of events the company claims Hermalin operated a disloyal scheme that began in early 2023 when he met with Fanatics CEO Michael Rubin and discussed possible employment. Uh, he spent more than three years at DraftKings, allegedly flew to Los Angeles last month after telling DraftKings he would be in Pennsylvania to mourn the loss of his friend while in L.A. He allegedly negotiated an employment contract with Fanatics and downloaded DraftKings uh, confidential business plans for the Super Bowl while sitting in a Fanatics office. The lawsuit accuses him of acting in concert with Fanatics and one point refers to the events and his new employer acting out their scheme. And then you already know he's cool with Robert Kraft. Robert Kraft was also cool with Harvey Weinstein and um, Jeffrey Epstein actually compared himself to Robert Kraft. But this is the guy that's talking about black culture. So, my thoughts on it. Um, and You know, the fact that, you know, people, you know, he was referencing, um, I think Mick Mill was doing a bunny hop. So these guys will have you believe that they're just helping just to help folks. They're billionaires. These guys don't do anything unless it is some type of revenue or some type of you owe me. So for him to say that he just likes to help and he's just helping to help or just having all these folks come to his party just to be there, I mean, it's pretty much to either use his product, make his product more profitable, or basically as a favor. So he don't need to be speaking on anything we got going on in our community. And shame on uh, the Breakfast Club, uh, especially Charlemagne, for not speaking up and calling this dude out because he got way too comfortable.